Greetings and blessings on this first weekend of the season of Lent. Thanks for joining me on this journey through our mission values. You know, as I mentioned um, in the last session, these mission values bring clarity to how we are to behave as Catholic individuals and as a church sent on mission. So in these six reflections, we will be looking at one per week. Obviously much can be shared about each of them, but with the limited time for these reflections, I can only touch the surface. But hopefully we'll all receive something from the Lord to think about and to pray about in our, um, for our own lives. So let's begin with the first mission value. It's be ambitious for God and his kingdom. You know, I grew up in a Catholic family. I went to Catholic schools through the eighth grade and my parents taught me how to practice my Catholic religion. By that, I mean like, like going to mass and going to confession or religious education. And I think this happens for most of us, unless we are a convert to the faith, perhaps. But, so I'm deeply grateful for what my parents gave me. But there's a difference between practicing my Catholic religion and practicing my Catholic faith. Practicing my religion is more about doing Catholic things those things I mentioned earlier. And it can lead to practicing our faith, but it doesn't always do so. Because the practice of faith is relational. It's about engaging this lively relationship with the Lord Jesus. And a lively faith makes us ambitious for God and for his kingdom. You know, in our culture today, the word Ambition can have negative connotations, but by itself it's neither good or bad. It's like money. It's just a tool people use for one purpose or another. What makes it good or bad is, is our interior motivation behind the ambition that determines it to be worldly or to be holy. And so much of our culture today pushes us toward worldly ambition which oftentimes means that takes us away from the Lord. So to be ambitious for God and his kingdom means to have, this, have a deep desire to please him by seeking and doing his will daily and in all things. It is following the desire to grow closer to God in every way possible and to live a life that honors and praises him. But there's a word of caution. Your know, ambition for God is not about trying to earn his approval or working hard to try and become good enough for him. We never have to seek his approval. We can never earn his love, nor do we need to try. The Lord, is in, Lord, he, the Lord inherently loves us because we have been created in his image and likeness. Being ambitious for God means that we recognize our complete dependence on God. He is the Lord of our lives. You know, St. Paul made it, made it his ambition to please God regardless of where he was. You know, in the second letter to the Corinthians, he said, so we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. That's from St. Paul. We are ambitious to please him. You know, it's one thing to seek to please God now and then. It's, it's quite another to wake up every morning with a renewed commitment to please God with our whole day, right? In our thoughts and our words and our deeds because our hearts are ambitious for God and his kingdom. So during this season of Lent, I suggest reflecting upon these questions. The first one is your ambition all about you or God's kingdom. In the words of St. James, he said, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. So in other words, are your life's motivations toward heaven or this world? The second reflection question is, 
Does your ambition move you to serve God and his kingdom? As St. Paul says, it has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known. You know, we can serve others and still not be serving God. There are plenty of good causes and best intentions out there. But following Christ means listening to what God wants for us in every area of our lives. And the third reflection question is, does your ambition bring you joy? You know, whatever you do, do from the heart as for the Lord and not for others, St. Paul says. Because the end goal of ambition and work is not our own personal satisfaction. Our ambition for God and his kingdom is what brings us true joy. And the best way to become more ambitious for God and his kingdom is to immerse yourself in the sacred scriptures, this living word of God. If this is not part of your spiritual life, begin today during the season of Lent. Do this daily. The ambition comes from the living Christ. He's just alive today as he was 2,000 years ago. He's our teacher. He's, his living word helps us discern God's will for our lives. And isn't doing God's will what is most important in life? My friends, become ambitious for God and his kingdom. And we'll see you next week. God bless you all.